Welcome Fusion community. I would like to introduce you all to our new CTO, Brett Schluzman. Um, this is an opportunity for us to get to know a little bit about Brett and why he joined the team and what he's going to bring to the Fusion community and the Fusion environment. Uh, to start off, let's ask Brett about his previous background and professional background. So Brett, tell us a little, about, a little bit about what you were doing before you joined Fusion. Well, thank you everyone for tuning in. Um, it's a long background, you know, so I don't know how far back you want me to go, but um, I started at American Express back in 1983. I did one of the first um, AI projects to teach computers how to learn how to approve people for their credit card purchases. Back in the old days, people would call up and um, a representative and say, was this charge approved? The representative would use some logic in their mind and they would approve it. And so one of my first jobs, which I was very fortunate to have, was an advanced technology group to say, what are these humans doing? How do we automate it? Um, back in the old days, we used to use something called Lisp. Now it's all Python and TensorFlow. Mm -hmm. and there's a lot of deep learning experience that we hope to bring to some of our products over the next uh, couple of years. Um, after that, um, I worked there for three years. I went on to First Boston Credit Suisse, which dealt with equities and trading. Yeah. I was in charge of um, dealing with high-speed, reliable communications between back-end systems and the trader workstations, yeah. helping build next-generation workstations. Um, after that, I went on to um, creating industrial automation and real-time financial um, components. I had started a company, um, and then from that I had various OEM deals. I built the first 3270 and 5250 terminal and relation products for Windows. I went on to writing all of the um, human machine interface for factory automation products for Rockwell Automation for a very long time. And then something interesting happened. Um, in the late 90s, someone came to me and said, I'm getting ripped off going to a cash machine and doing ATM transactions. And he said, yeah. Brett, can you build me something? I said, yeah, I don't see why not. Um, actually, it was a very interesting problem, Simpl similar to all the power chain solutions that we're trying to solve today. Many divergent systems, and, and when you go to a cash machine, you'll see all these different logos up on top. And you have to ask yourself, how do these systems all connect and finally get to your bank account yeah. and take the money out? Sure. And so um, back then, believe it or not, it's actually up there again, when you use a foreign ATM, one not connected to your bank, they would charge you $5. And the guy goes, you know, this is insane. I'm getting ripped off on fees. He said, can you build me something? He knew I had a lot of real-time experience. And I looked into the problem. And it was very interesting because I ended up building a network appliance in which we could take various message formats. And then I wrote a compiler for these message formats so that business people could describe the problem of how to connect to their back-end systems. And then they would get compiled into real-time C++ um, handlers for those various systems. It's amazing that in how much the finance industry has changed in the mm -hmm. 20 years that you've been, or 30 years you've been involved in it, um, from what you were doing in the 90s to what you're doing today with blockchain and fusion. It's pretty, pretty amazing. Yeah. yeah, but what's old is new. So when you have, when you connect many different systems together, there are problems of reversal, settlement, reconciliation, yeah. error tracing, monitoring. Um, there's, and there's also compliance with governments. So and it's, it's kind of new ways of solving this existing problem. And it's exciting because of decentralized databases. What happens in a sense that um, reliability, backup, scalability, um, issues you don't really hear. But just to clean up my background real quick, um, um, I built this company, built it up to um, about 30 people. We had over 720 institutions connecting to it. Um, and then I sold it to a public company. Yeah. Um, it, was a, it was a great ride. And then it was interesting because I had never gone to college. So about 12 years ago, I decided to go to college. I graduated with a 3.9. But at the same time, when not I was bad, there, not bad. Not bad. Um, what was interesting, though, um, and I went to college because I didn't want my kids to go, hey, you know, I don't go to college. Yeah, yeah. And look how yeah. successful he's been. Yeah. Exactly. So, what was interesting though is I was building these real time components. Um, um, I was approached by a, a company called DRS with people I used to work with, and they were having trouble delivering some technology for the Navy in order to control all the subsystems mm -hmm. on the ship. 
and I have experience with real-time communications and the problems with divergent systems. And they asked could I help out with the problem. And I actually built um, this whole communication and visualization level um, for littorial combat ships. And so, yeah, so it was a great project. And it's still in use. Is that and it's, it's, it's going to be in use for 40 years. Fusion yeah. allows me to um, consult part-time and when any problems come up. Uh, yeah. because of my long-term agreement. But um, yeah, I'm a, also a U.S. defense contractor as my previous life, dealing with mission-critical systems. So I would say the breadth of my experience is things, the lights need to stay on, always. We need to have scalability, reliability, um, we need to have testing, yeah. um, we need to have strong systems that do not fail yeah. and that are proven and are always being challenged. Something in software development called continuous integration. Yeah. Fascinating. So yeah. It sounds like you've had experience sort of across a whole range of industries. You've obviously got background in implementation with tech solutions to big financial institutions. Got this history with the Navy and the US Army, which is really fascinating. What drew you to the blockchain space? Well, it was interesting. Um, I, I'm involved in a lot of different startups, as well as um, um, I did a product called Mibi, which can still download from the App Store, which is um, a social gaming in which people compete with each other. Um, I built the enterprise back end. I'm also an iOS developer, a Java developer. Uh, I'll give you some of my technical certs. I think it's important that CTOs today are also programmers. Yeah, you mentioned that to me a few times. You love, you enjoy managing, but your passion is really getting down into the detail and programming stuff. Is that right? Yeah, I think it's important that if you have technical teams, you should know what the heck they're doing, mm. and be able to challenge them to do better. And um, and and you know, here at Fusion, which I really like, is we're a flat organization. I mean, yeah. we split apart. Yeah. We work on products. We're very agile in what we're doing. So people need peers in what they're working with. And if I'm telling someone how to code something, um, it better work. So um, I built this beautiful app called Nibby. Um, I'm also, um, um, for AWS, I've passed the certifications for solution, cloud solution developer, cloud solution architect. Yeah. I've, <coughs> excuse me, I've done these Udacity degrees in deep learning and React. I really love React, um, which is a great web-based interface. Yeah. But to answer your question specifically, um, blockchain, tons of stuff. Yeah. Real-time, decentralized communications, key to how every single industry is looking at things. The last project that I was on, <coughs> sorry, I've had a bad throat all week and you dragged me into this <laughs> meeting. Um, the last project I worked on, um, people can go look at it, it's called payplus.ag, and it's a whole payment gateway Right. Dealing with fiat currencies and blockchain. <coughs> so that was your first exposure to sort of blockchain infrastructure? Oh no, I've been programming in Solidity and Geth for several years. Right. I've been yeah. exploring different solutions. I've had startups that started, failed with the idea. The Navy has asked me to look for real-time logging of it as well. Interesting. So, big breadth of experience inside of Solidity and um, using Geth. In terms of Solidity and writing smart contracts on top of the Ethereum network, what sort of limitations are there and how do you think Fusion can make writing complex smart contracts sort of easier? Well, we already do that. I mean, when you look at this idea that a wallet address has an asset, it, 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 it is a paradigm that changes everything to eliminate a lot of solidity development around ERC-20 tokens. Yeah. So Ethereum, a fantastic platform, the idea of ERC-20, fantastic how the community developed that, but it, it requires an extra step in order to represent an asset. Fusion and, the, and, and just the, the in, ingenuity of it is that inside a wallet address, I have an asset. I can trade that asset with you. I can swap that asset with you. Um, it eliminates, if you see the stuff that we're coming out with in the next two months, we, we have revolutionized the approach that tokens do not matter anymore. And all of a sudden, you go to yourself, wow, I can send things without having a token contract address? Yeah. It's weird to us. 
Yeah, it's, I mean, from someone who doesn't have a technical background, I think understand, well, being able to, one, do things using smart contracts is, there's a huge barrier. Um, two, like, if I look through, say, my Ether wallet and there's all these contracts that are there as templates, but I don't really understand what they do because really understanding them requires you to look through the code and it's very confusing. Um, so I feel like I'm quite limited in my own experience with, with cryptocurrency to just trading. Mm. Trading, sending to a friend, sending to a business, participating in ICO, and it sounds like Fusion is going to create an ecosystem where we can expand sort of usability for non-technical people like me, which is super important. So yeah, think about it. Uh, we're, we're doing some incredible things, I think, for the financial community. But one of my loves is, is these enterprise business applications to give the power to the community. So what do I mean by that? We have the ability to represent any sort of asset without writing smart contracts inside of Fusion. So I think I referenced this to you before. Say I'm gonna do a gig, a band show, yeah. and I need a thousand tickets. Yeah. I can actually represent a thousand tickets as an asset within my wallet without any smart contracts. I just yeah. say, create the asset, all of a sudden it appears, I say I have a thousand, and then you can send that asset, just like you send Bitcoin or Ethereum, yeah. you can send that ticket to someone. Yeah. And then they can show in their wallet that they have that ticket and enter the venue. So all of a sudden, without any programming, just the idea of sending something to someone, like you used to send Ethereum or Bitcoin, yeah. you can now send a show ticket. Yeah, it's awesome. And it, it, it's just a revolutionary idea to simplify the fact that a wallet should really represent the internet of value, what you have around you in your life. Sure. And you know, for me, I was just so jived when I realized I don't have to do the ticket smart contract. Mm. I don't have to explain to someone how to execute it. I can yeah. just say, Oh, I have a thousand tickets as my balance, let me send it to you. That's awesome. And I think if you look at like a, a common criticism that's leveled against the cryptocurrency landscape today, and what has actually been achieved in the crypto space, people will say, well, how many people are actually using these decentralized applications that all these companies and projects are building? And the answer is not many people. And I think this sort of ingenuity and this process and this system that Fusion is developing may actually enable some really easy to use applications. I, I, I'm really excited about it. I think, one, I think we are doing with our lock-in and lock-out, our time block, it, these features just blow away everything else out there for both enterprise and for people who want to do just app development. It, it, what sure, we yeah. plan on delivering over the next several months is going to revolutionize how people do app development. Um, you know, you could think is, you know, we're doing time lock and we always talk about these complex um, financial applications that are very easy to do now in Fusion. And a lot of these companies that are trying to attack blockchain, they're building more and more smart contracts. Yeah. We're saying this is the nucleus of our blockchain solution. That taking um, this knowledge that was, that was hacked together we have the ability to step back for a second and say, what is the nucleus of really a transaction that I do in my wallet, and how can I make it powerful? And for the, the stuff that we're gonna be releasing over the next several months for the financial community, is gonna blow them away. But I come back to the decentralized and the community because we want the next Venmo in a sense. We want the next Airbnb. Yeah, yeah. Um, we want, so if you think about it, let's talk about Airbnb, maybe our community when you know, they start going in and playing, they're gonna see that they can actually build an asset called, um, let's step back for a second, they can rent a house for a summer at the beach, but they're yeah. not gonna be there every day at the beach. Sure. But they have 100 days at the beach. Yeah. And what they can do is they can time lock each day yeah. and they can send it to someone yeah, we've discussed this previously, this idea of time lock being an incredibly efficient way of doing like timeshares for rental um, or holiday homes, and it's true. It just eliminates so much of the Car share. Car yeah. Shares, yeah. And then, say with the Airbnb's killer, you have a smart lock that scans your ticket, your wallet, 
has your wallet address, confirms your balance, that you have that asset on that time lock period, yeah. and the door opens. Yeah. And it's also a legal document saying that the bearer of this at this time, it all of a sudden, right. it's, it's wild yeah. that you are eliminating so many smart contracts, so many back-end systems yeah. that we're dealing with this, and it's just a few get calls. So if I'm a React developer or a Swift developer or an Android Java developer, I would recommend React. I'm going to probably get booed at inside the community. Um, very easily with our Web3 extensions, you can build these rich yeah. applications. And on that thought, what do you think the role of the community is in helping, not from a I'll ask you from a technical perspective, building out some of these use cases and these applications mm -hmm. and supporting us even in the development of our core code in some ways through, say, a bug bounty or something like that? Well, it's, you know, we need the, the ability to scale and to respond to our community. So the only way in which we test the system, yeah. and there's a lot of information we can't, we're going to be releasing over the next few weeks about the scale that we're doing and how the community is going to help us and be rewarded. But um, the only complexity lends itself to a new case of problems. And we expect our infrastructure of our blockchain solution to be used by millions, by, by tens of millions, hundreds of millions. Millions. When I talk about this applications, um, the ability that our wallet natively enables so many forward-facing applications for the masses and so yeah. much economic opportunity, I think our community, who has been loyal and strong and true, has the first inklings now, hopefully the vision, that they will be able to create truly applications where they're not worried about all the difficulties of the back ends in relationship to this, and they're given a simple way to represent value, yeah. share value, and profit from that value. So um, I, I'm just really excited, and I think um, you'll be uh, getting up our bug bounty program, I think, sometime in the next couple of weeks. We, yeah. We've done a lot of work on that. Um, I think we're going to reward the community well. Um, we have bright people here, but there's always someone brighter than you out there and someone who can help you see. I think um, we're updating our website for feedback, which I think is extremely important. Yeah. Um, you're the community guy. You're going to start arranging um, the meetups, and it should be really yeah. fun. I, I, we need the smart people in the community and even the cynics to challenge us. Like, I'm saying all this great stuff, but, you know... I'm always aware that I might be drinking my own Kool-Aid. That we, in a sense, are in a complacency block. And um, I'm, there's, I, there's no shortage of feedback coming through the community there, which is positive, which is great for us. I mean, the negative is just as important because we need to grow as an organization constantly. Yeah. You know, we always challenge. You know, you know, we're working with me. I don't cut any slack. And That's true. very true. But I want I also want to be told when I'm wrong. Yeah, I like very to, open to the feedback. No? Right. Yeah. And we're having so much fun building things. And if we can get the community involved and get them, you know, to challenge us with, you know, the things that I've just talked about, yeah. where new applications will be easier, and they go, Well it's really not and I'll go, Oh man, well how do I make it easier? Sure. And how do we have a group discussion and get that feedback? Because the only way we will survive is with our community. We are we are not an island. You know, we are a people who all need each other to make the great technology that is just going to sure. pave um, the financial infrastructure of tomorrow. It's true, and I think like Fusion, being an employee at Fusion, you really see that it's such a global team. Like one, you have the community who is spread across the world in in, the, in a significant way. We've got people from all over the world. But also internally, like our core team, what's it like managing um, people in China who predominantly speak Chinese, mm. um, <laughs> some tech people in South Africa, in Zurich, in New York, it must the be quite, in the, the Netherlands, Netherlands now with Joey, it must be quite yeah. a challenge, right? Yeah, um, the, the worst part about the Shanghai team is I started smoking, so we can't <laughs> tell my wife. So, you know, we have this very communal, what, what's yeah. really, um, we have this very communal thing that, you know, we go outside and we talk. You know, when the team is here in New York, uh, we break about every hour and they're hanging out on the street smoking and I'm hanging out with them. And, 
But what's really important that I've learned is, is that programmers in themselves have their own culture. Yeah. Um, I think that they want to build great things. I think that we always have to be aware that business kind of drives those things, but you know, we, we're, we're, we're a band of, of soldiers together, of, of, of musicians, and we, we connect. And what's really nice about Fusion, um, you know, is the culture is that way. That, yeah, I mean, that everyone's very friendly in a way, environment, I think is the right way to talk about it. Like, especially when we have the developers and DJ from China over to visit, we kind of, it sounds cliche, but it does kind of feel like a family. We really spend all day and night together. Mm. We leave the office, we go and explore the city together. And in the office, we're kind of working hard, but it feels very communal. Yeah, we go and grab lunch, we're having coffee, yeah, we're, sure. we're having our coffee runs, and you know, when we have our heated discussions, we go, okay, food time. And we all go out and get food and then come back and work our butts off. And um, I, so um, to managing the different teams, just a few things about myself is, um, um, I'm also a European citizen. I, I speak um, French and Polish. Yeah. And so um, I'm, I'm pretty, one of the reasons I think I was hired was my adaptability to these different things and, and trying sure. to learn. But I, I just want to say that, you know, DJ is hired extremely well. And the culture that he's built here, it's just pure joy. I mean, so it's, yeah. it's a great place to work. Um, yeah. We have a lot to get done. But we are, I'm just so jived um, by the decentralized applications we're building, by the business way, way business can use this as well. Yeah. And I'm hoping that the success of business applications be the decentralized and community applications, yeah. and they find like a balance, you know? So what, so what do you think are the challenges of getting businesses or even large financial institutions to actually use decentralized products or um, use the blockchain in a, in a significant way or implement blockchain into their business models in a significant way? You know, well, the first thing of all businesses, they run quarterly, and they themselves have to, they can't sometimes break out of the box yeah. and think long term. Sure. Yeah. You know, they're just so worried about, how do I get to this quarter, how do I report sure. success, how do I get to the next? Yeah. But, that said, they're all seeing the efficiency of, and the benefits of large-scale distribution and, um, and just the, the mental energy and power and positive thoughts that are, and the ingenuity that's going into developing applications for their market. And they are very much aware that they themselves could be left way behind because the community themselves, just as we talked about the ticket program, the Airbnb, yeah. there's no reason you can't do crowd financing sure. very easily. Yeah. But, the, the issues um, with large institutions are there's also a lot of competing solutions, you know? Sure. I, I have investigated these different blockchain techs and I love Fusion. I think they have hit, it, hit the nail on the head mm. with simplifying asset creation, the ideas of time lock, and... Um, and DCRM as well. DCRM, lock in, lock out. The, these things are just ingeniously simple to eliminate immense amounts of laborious work to bring the solution together. So yeah. the question now is, how do I go to a bank and communicate that message? And that really comes from the community knowing about it, working at banks, being aware. Us, you, you have your job set up. You know. Yeah. You, we actually discussed. Uh, I think it was last week in the Telegram group, um, building sort of an ecosystem where we can empower community members to approach business people or even financial institutions or their mm. network on our behalf and kind of connect us, maybe earn a reward for... Uh, oh, finders fee. Find yeah. yeah, genius. Um, but, but to answer your question, there's so much noise about all these great solutions. Yeah, um, that's true. And, and they are. People are working hard. We're taking some great ideas. You know, we learn from other people. Yeah. Um, I see an incredible roadmap for where we're going and developing what we believe is the financial infrastructure of the future. Yeah. I, I think we're just doing an incredible job. Um, I think it becomes a challenge, like with anything, in order to communicate that message to the financial community. Um, I'm not a salesperson, but 
you know, I think we have great community, great uh, marketing people at our company. Yeah. And, you know, we have our, we have a job set out for us. You know, it's no, so what are businesses, all financial institutions, all supply chain, um, all manufacturing know they need blockchain. End of discussion. What solution they pick, you know, that's that's on your shoulders. I'm going to deliver you great stuff to go to them yeah. and talk to them about. But, you know, good luck there, all right? So let me know how it goes. And well, I've got good support. We've got a strong marketing team, biz dev team. We've got a good business strategy. So yeah. I feel quite confident. I think there are already good conversations happening. Yeah, they're right? fantastic so, stuff that we, we will. I mean, you mentioned your past experience working with financial institutions. So you obviously have a great network. Charles, who. Oh, uh, the, the team, the team the here is, it, we're in New York City. Financial, you know, London might argue or some other places, but, you know, financial capital, one of the financial capitals of the world, I want to be fair. And the opportunities and the meetings we have every day explaining to people what's going on and their interests, very high here. Very, very high. And um, and you're right. Take a serious network as well, I think, Mm. used to be. Yeah. Awesome. Um, So, this is, you sort of answered this question, but do you think... How long will it take till we see real progress in the industry? Do you think six months, a year, five years? Is it too hard to say? Um, well, I guess we were not privy to a lot of internal developments that happen yeah. inside of banks. Um, I, I believe in supply chain that we're already seeing you know, recording of ledgers. I know in the payment space, um, in my previous um, you know, place where I architected and advised the whole blockchain solution, that's doing 25 million euros of transactions currently, you know, for that business, and they're all being recorded onto the blockchain. Yeah. So um, I think that, you know, we have something called Mac- Metcalf's law and the network effect. It's already happening in pockets, and at one point, it's just going to be. So it's all hidden in these pockets, but it gets so large, all of a sudden, it is nothing but blockchain. Yeah, I mean, like almost a domino, I think as well. You know, and, and I think what we're doing, um, when people understand how quickly they'll be able to deploy financial applications, whether they be these vertical high-end banking finance solutions, or whether they be the mass scale that will probably be the more successful mm. consumer-facing applications, yeah. um, I think you know I think we just have such a dominant future in what we plan to do. With our with our blockchain server, I think it's just unbelievable. Awesome. Um, something we talk a lot about internally, I think, is consensus protocols. Um, what do you have a favorite? How do you feel about consensus mechanisms? What excites you about consensus? Sure. Well, we're going to be coming out with some papers on consensus because we're doing some really wild stuff. And the idea of consensus, as you know is to, ins- to improve the, the, all the work and the scientific, looking at the problems, the 51% attack, which might actually be a 17% attack, yeah. um, all the different ways. You know, we have proof of work, proof of stake, proof of, uh, of authority, and we have other things that are based on gossip protocols and how we work together. If yeah. We have sub-sharding of nodes as well. Yeah. Um, it's very exciting time, and I think um, we don't want to um, say too much today, yeah, I, but you I know, recognize we're bound by. Yeah, well, you caught me as we're building papers and, and news that is going to come out. Yeah. But um, personally, I believe that we should have a very flexible sort of consensus mythology. Yeah. And it started with this great idea of hybrid consensus. And I think you're going to see some really exciting things coming out of our lab where I think we're going to blow away everyone in relationship to this but um you know i love proof of stake i think it's a great way um like when we're talking about these consumer apps i have when i build a consumer app i have to think about the data center problem and i have to pay for my computers yeah sure you know so i'm like man you know that's a big capital upfront investment sure so why don't i just get ask people hey do you want to make a little money running a computer for me so you'll stake it. Yeah. You know, so all of a sudden, proof of stake becomes a way that I can bootstrap a business model sure. that people can actually become cloud providers. 
Yeah. They go up to AWS, Azure, you know, and um, Google, and they just spin up a computer, and they're helping me run my Airbnb business. They're helping me run my decentralized finance yeah. business. And by proof of stake, they can get rewarded, but I can still have good throughput of my transactions. Yeah. You know? I think one of the things that you brought to the team in particular is uh, this drive to sort of productize things and make things super easy for the end user. Um, so one of those is I think we're going to provide a really easy guidelines and even systems for people to quickly execute, set up and right. so we'll get, we'll, we'll, right. we'll, we'll, give, we'll give people one, one thing from all the secret stuff coming yeah. out of that. Yeah. It's called staking in a box. Yeah. That they're going to be able to have turnkey stakers that just flip on and then well, basically as simple as clicking a button. Right. Well, it's maybe a few steps, but cloud deployment and solutions yeah. where we believe the community should have staking in a box, but I hope yeah. I don't get killed for, by everybody for, for telling you that what's and coming And then there's out. also, you can, if you don't want to do that, you can even time lock your fusion tokens to someone else if you don't want to go through the process of setting up a node, um, trade it to them and they can stake on your behalf, but you still have full ownership over the token into the future. You can, so well, you think about it, I can lend you my, secure. you'll say, hey, you'll give me a Bitcoin and I'll lend you a thousand fusion tokens for a month. Yeah. And for a month, you can run a staker because you believe you know how to do you the staker earn, in the box. You can the earn cloud. returns for a month, but I still have security that I'll have the, the FSN full access and ownership over the FSN tokens after the month. You know, time lock is kind of always a complexity around people's minds when we first say it. Yeah. Because... It is confusing, yeah. It, it, but it, then all of a sudden it flips and becomes so elegantly simple. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I don't, I don't, there's a, all this stuff about security that comes from time lock tokens. Because when I give you an asset and it's running, and I say, I'm going to sell it to you for 30 days. Yeah. All it really means is I can't do anything else with that token for 30 days. Yeah. So I can't send, which is basically the main thing, yeah. um, out of my account. Yeah, has so to sit in your account. It sits locked in my account because the system knows another wallet has the rights to that for 30 days. Yeah. And you're absolutely correct. So the solutions that you can come up with and this is any asset. Yeah. That's what's even plays more with your mind. Yeah. And then once that period ends, the fusion engine is so intelligent, it then and so elegantly simple in how it approaches it that all of a sudden I'm allowed to send it again. Yeah. But it's you know, it's like me lending your car for fifty bucks and you're gonna go on a cross. Oh, no matter what, I get my car back. Unlike if For I've sure. seen your driving, I might not get my car back. <laughs> but in the in well, the fusion world, I get my asset back at the end of that time lock. Yeah, and I think time lock is something that's applicable to existing ideas, but it's also going to create this kind of new foundation for what are things we haven't thought about that time lock can be a useful solution to. Um, and I think one of the things we talk about is with fusion is like we're going to be satisfying the requirements of existing uh, services and functions and stuff like that, but what are the new things that we haven't even thought of yet right. that are gonna be possible with Time Lock? And well, Time Lock is really wild because, you know, think of all these contracts that are written to do Time Lock. And yeah. all it is is just a simple thing, say, create assets, start here, end here, and send it to that guy. Yeah. And all of a sudden, I've done a full Time Lock contract and solidity, all this work, but, the server itself knows how to do this natively now. Uh, we've been going for quite a long time, but I'm going to ask you a few more questions. Oh, my throat, you know, that's know, so unfair. Um, what's a good question? I have so many. Um, who do you respect in the blockchain space, or which projects inspire you, or have you learned a lot from which code base have you looked at and been like, oh, this is really impressive? You know, well, we have a, we have a lot of things when we deal with code. The, the ideas, I think it's very unfair to pick out one idea because what yeah. we want to do is um, we want to be a smorgasbord of all ideas and take that input in, um, assimilate it with the board 
and come and, and purify it. Yeah. I mean, all that noise is so, so important to challenge us to sure. be better. Sure. You know, and I have to say the whole blockchain community is amazing. I mean, you're going into a new industry, an asset in industry. Yeah. You're trying to find a business for it. You're trying to survive. Um, you're trying to find customers and a sense of need. And, you know, every time I go to a blockchain conference, every time I go to a meetup, um, I'm inspired by the people around me. I'm inspired by the community that is demanding decentralization. Uh, I don't want to sound like a revolutionary, but the demanding decentralization and democratization of financial services. Yeah. And though governments exist and it's not going to happen, it challenges them, the big banks, to do better yeah. and to give better service to our community. Yeah. So when you ask me this question, um, you know, I, I believe there's value in everything that I've looked at. And I think that coding styles, you have to be careful to say one is better than the other because you just might be too ignorant to sit, understand what that developer was doing. Mm. You know, I could be arrogant and say, yeah, my code's the best, you know. And one of the fun things we do here, everyone does code review. So yeah. even the CTO's code gets code reviewed. Yeah. And so I am really big that our team is looking at each other's code and saying, why did you do this? And this goes back to your question about respect. I respect the whole community. Yeah. All right. It's no one stands above anybody. Um, but I've always been kind of like a socialist, communist, radical guy. So, but um, I respect the whole community. The ideas and what we're challenging ourselves. Fusion stands on the shoulders of all the other ideas that came before us. The complexities that started, um, I call it the Christmas tree effect. In the blockchain world, we're constantly adding new decorations onto it. Mm. And we do this through contracts and the tree starts falling. Fusion was the time to reset the foundation mm. for what a financial infrastructure product should be. And from that foundation, we, we hope to be starting again, and then we hope the community is going to challenge us, and we're going to have a lot of discussions, like the staker in the box. We're coming out with a lot of cool things over the next several weeks yeah. where the community can actually add value into the system. Yeah. And, uh, last question, I think, is... This is fun. You know, this is really fun. fun. I, I could go, go all day. I'm sure the community are enjoying it. Um, so you've been brought on a CTO, what are your short to medium term goals as CTO? What do you hope to achieve in the next six months? And what's your approach to delivering? Well, you've already talked about it. And um, is that the productization. We need yeah. to be a product. We need to be something that can be monitored, um, that we can trace through, because you can do complex, simply, very simply, you can do complex financial infrastructure solutions with our products. And you need things in which it's a consistent way to diagnose these things and to look at these things. Um, you know, we as a team have done some incredible things. You know, we've organized our process. We have continuous integration. We have testing. We have um, detailed project plans about what we're delivering. Um, and I think that the community is really going to be jived on the fact that they're going to have some very powerful tools to be using very soon and the yeah. ability to be staking very soon. Awesome. Brett, thank you for joining us today. Yona, thank I, you for doing this I and feel, taking care of the I'm community. A, honestly, I feel very confident with you at the helm of our technology team. But, no pressure. No pressure, but, but, I, but the you've team... Already, you've already, I think you've already made a big impact here. Mm -hmm. I'm very excited. Thank no, you. thank you so much. But I want to say the team inspires me to do what you do. I, I, your team builds you up. Your team mm. makes you become, you know, better. And I just really want to thank you being part of this team. And it's thank just you. a jam, man. It's I'm, just having, I'm just having fun. All right. All right. Thanks, guys. Let's see. I think. Oh.